day that truly God has made. And we ought to rejoice in it. I know that there's so much going on in the world today. Killing. Every time we turn around, we hear a story of some needless death or some young person has been killed. Family life has been put in shambles. Needless deaths, someone being jacked at a service station, cannot even shop in a grocery store or mall for fear that someone may pull out a gun and start shooting. We walk in fear each and every day, even in the church. We walk in fear each and every day because we don't, we just don't know, we don't know what people are going to do because of how people think and how people feel today. And there's a reason for it, and I'm going to give you my exegesis, the reason I believe that the reason is. We have strayed away, the church of the living God have strayed away from the true message that the church is to be founded on. Jesus didn't come in with a message talking about prosperity and getting rich and being blessed abundantly with things. He came talking about where will we spend eternity. He came into the world to save us from ourselves so that we might have eternal life. The church had given up for the most part, not many, not all, but too many televangelists and others' message that they preach and they teach. It's all about getting rich and prospering. But they don't talk about how we ought to live a godly life. The church is supposed to teach people how to live a godly life. Not like the world. We're not to be like the world. We're not to conform to the ways of the world. The world is jealous. The world is envious. The world uh, despises truth. That's why we got a lying president. Because the world despises truth. They don't want to deal with truth. They want to deal with and deal in falsehood. But let me tell you what it is so that you'll know, so that you can think about it. I want you to think today. I want you to think today. I want you to think today. Get out from the, who you are, from yourself, and what you're dealing with, the problem you deal with, your marriage, your relationship with your spouse, and your relationship with your mother and with your father, your sister and brother, your co-workers. I want you to move away from that today and forget about that. Leave that, leave that right where it is, but I want you to focus on something. Jealousy is an awful thing. Envy is an awful thing. But let me tell you who the most jealous person it is, Mike. I want you to know who the most jealous person it is. It's the one who has tricked us and beguiled us like he did the folks in the Garden of Eden. He beguiled us and got us to look at things versus looking at to where our help come from, come from God. He's tricked us. He's, he, the enemy has tricked us. He, he's infiltrated himself into the church of the living God and have tricked us. And this is what he did. He jealous because he know he can't get eternal life. He can't get what we can get. He can't get back to heaven. But he know we can. And he does everything that he can to keep us from getting the promise of the Father, which is eternal life to spend eternity with him. I want you to think about that. But that's what the enemy has done. He's infiltrated the church. And you know what he did? He took out what I'm finna talk about right now. He took out love. He took love and replaced love with things. 
That's what I want to talk about today is love. Look at the neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm going to talk about love today. Now, now, if you got pad and pencil and you want to take notes, that's good too. Because I want this to stick with you today. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about how we have become a people that's more concerned about ourselves and more concerned about what we can get and how we can get it. It doesn't matter how we get it, which way we get it, as long as we get it. Whether we keep it or not, we just want to get it. But the enemy took that away from us. Love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave us love. And I want to talk about that today. There are, there are four points that I want to make today. For a bird. Thank you, sir. The Greeks had four words which we translate as love. Eros. Think about that. Eros. Cardinal or sexual love. That's a form of love. Cardinal or sexual love. Filio. The love of a close friendship or a relative. A friendship. Close friendship. Friendship. Your friend. Eros. Eros. I mean, Filio. Filio. That's the love that John has for me as his friend. You do have that love, right? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> you weren't saying that. I didn't want to mention it. You should have said amen. I thought you would say amen. Right. <laughs> Story game. The love of a family relationship. That's the love you have for your family member. And we all should have love for our family member. And then agape. That love which seeks only the highest good of others. That's the love that God has for us. He seeks the highest good for us. And we should have that agape love where we seek the highest good for others. We shouldn't be judgmental. We shouldn't be judging folks. You know, we, we run around here and that's all we do is judge, 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 judge. Judge other people, but we looking at what we doing. And we ain't looking at what we did. Next slide, Blurry. Do you give it to me, please? Agape has to do with the mind it's a mental thing it's how you think it's how you think it's how you process things all of us process things differently how you see things is different as to how I see things and for you young people you don't see it like I see it because you ain't lived as long as I live so you can't process it like I can I can't process it like you can because I'm not living during your era, so I don't know the thing that you are going through and the thing that you're having to deal with and how you have to deal. So I can't process that in my mind. I can only process what I know in my mind. Can I get a witness? So agape has to do with a mind. It's not simply emotion or a physical reaction to something. It is a principle by which we choose to live by. We got to choose to live by looking for the greater good in others. I can't get no amens on that. It's because y'all still stuck on prosperity. You brought nothing in this world and you ain't taking nothing away. And agape is not rooted, not rooted in the feeling young ladies, young men, or urge of the heart. It's not a physical attraction. It's not an urge. It's not what your heart feels. That's not agape love. Agape love is a principle. Remember what I said, it's a principle that you live by. It's not emotion. Emotions will take you so many different kinds of ways, you be emotional. 
You like this person because his hair look this way. You like her because she got big legs. Now, all that's emotion. <laughs> Hello, somebody. That ain't nothing but emotion. And then it moves to the heart. I, I love them. I love them. You don't love them. You just love how they look or what they got. That ain't love. That's Eros love. That's that cardinal or sexual love. Talking about agape love. Give me my next slide. It is a caring love, one which primarily involves with the need of others and not for selfish, not for yourself. It's not for selfish reason. It's not for what you can get out of it. We got children, we got older people. They look at what, I love you because what you're doing for me. What can I get out of it? If I can get something out of it, I love you. But you know, love is nothing but something that is said, but it, love is something that's got to be what? Shown. And it can't just be shown today because the night is the night. Y'all heard what I said. You're going to say it today because tonight is the night. But love has got to be something that's shown all the time. It does not depend upon one being loved, having to deserve or earn it. It's just love. I ain't got to love John because he did something to earn it. I love him because he is a child of God. And you, you, we got to get back to that place where we used to could just love one another, not because of this and not because of that, but we love them just because we love them because we're supposed to love them. We want to see the greater good. You know, the reason, the reason a lot of people do things they do because they ain't feeling no love. They ain't feeling no love. I, I, I asked that question earlier about who in here uh, don't feel love. I said, I want I want you to come. I want you to one who don't feel I want you to come because I want you to know there is love. There is somebody love you. God loves you. You can't put your trust and love in man because man love will deceive you and man love will let you down. But the love that God has for you, it goes greater than any love that any man can have. The first point I want, I've got three points I want to talk about. Y'all give me a little minute today. I want to teach a little bit today. The three points that I want to talk about. Bring one bird. There are three of them. Three points. The first point I want to talk about is God's love for us. God loves for us. God loves for us. Read my scripture. First John 4 16 and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him I want to talk about God's love I want to talk about God's love God in the beginning created man God didn't have to do it but he did and then let, let's look at the second thing that God did. Before God created man, he created everything and put everything in place. And then he put the animals in place. He put the plants and water. And then he, then he created man. And then what he did, he, lo he loved man so much that he made man in his image and in his likeness. Just like a mother having a child, a father having a child. You're going to love your child. If you're, if you're a parent, you're going to love You might not like what to do, but you're going to love them because they're yours. Can I get a witness? I don't like everything my children do, but I love them because they're mine. And some of them I fed them so long they look like me. But I love them. Regardless. Because they're mine. God loves us because we're his. Man, God.
God created, gave him dominion over this and gave him dominion over that. And man, even though God gave him everything he needed, gave him paradise to cultivate and to take care of, and even with all of that that God had given man, man went into God in a place of utopia, had everything going on, and then got kicked out. Because he disobeyed God. This is, this is a side note. Sometimes parents, you got to kick them out because they disobey. <laughs> Sometimes tough love has got to be shown. He had to show a little tough love. He kicked them out. And when he kicked them out, I'm sure how God is and his love is, so merciful and so kind. Even though he kicked them out, he still loved them. Even though he kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden, come on now, you Bible reader, he still loved them. And from generation to generation to generation, man was wicked, man was evil, man was still sinning, and God was still shining his love on them. Because that's how God loves us. Give me Jeremiah 31 and 3, that bird. Read. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Ever what? Lasting love. Come on, somebody with a what? Everlasting love. His love don't end. He let the sun shine on the just and the unjust. And then he goes on and says, I have to love you with everlasting love. And therefore, with love and kindness have I what? Drawn thee. Because he loves us in spite of us. He let the sun shine on the just and the unjust, the wicked and the righteous. Because he loves all of us. He doesn't separate. It's like a parent. You may have a child that's, you know, kind of wayward. Then you got a child that's kind of good, but you still gonna love all your children. Hello, you don't you don't you don't stop loving your child just because they've been out, out of jail. <laughs> you may not be going to jail to get them out no more, but they don't stop you from loving them. Hello, somebody. You may have a child that ain't never been to jail, never caused you no trouble, but you ain't gonna love that child more than you love the child that's a troublemaker because that's still your what child. And that's God love. It's an unconditional love. That's an agape love. That unconditional love. You ain't doing nothing to deserve my love, but I'm giving it to you anyway because I love you. All right, Bert, give me my next one. Thank you. I love for God. What is I love for God? John says, 1 John 4, 16, he says, for God. But we love him because he loved us first. We love him because he loved us first. Give me the next one, Bert. Matthew 22, 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Now listen at that. Now, I want y'all to read that, too, because I want that to stick in your craw. I want that to stick in your belly. I want that to stick with you. I want it to be like black-eyed peas. I want it to be like Chinese food. I want it to stick with you. I want it to be like collard greens and neck bones. I want it to stick with you. All right, I want this to stick with you when you leave here today. If you ain't got now another strip, then I now another, not now another, not another one. I want you to have this one. If you don't get now another scripture, I want you to get this one. All right. Read. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's go back to where it's coming from. Because see, then you get home, you can read it for yourself. Then it'll stick with you. All right. Read. Now let's let's tear that apart a little bit. Let's tear it a little apart. Let's tear it a little apart. Y'all know I wanted to be a teacher, but I couldn't deal with them children, so you know. <laughs> Go back to my scripture bird. I love teaching. I love teaching. 
did he do? And this is what Jesus said to them. They said, well, they asked the question, the previous question, they said, well, Lord, what is the greatest commandment? What, is, what are we really supposed to be about? What are we really supposed to do? This is what they asked in Jesus. Jesus says, thou shalt love the Lord. You know, I said earlier when we started off, I said, let's give God a great big hand. Everybody, people like, and I said, let's, let's give God a great big hand. People didn't get a little louder. And I said, let's give God, thank, he, who woke up this morning? Who did this? Who did it? Think about it. And then some folks still, but then you say you love him when you need him. When you don't need him, you don't show that love. What I said, it ain't the nice tonight, that's why you love him. That's why you're going to show love because tonight's tonight. Y'all get what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sitting here talking some crazy. But when you say you love him, you show you love him what? All the time. Not when you're going through, I need you now, I need you now. That midnight call, I need you now. So y'all know what I'm talking about. So now I love you. I'm going through something, so I love you. I need you now. I need you. Mm -hmm. Lord I need you so come on and see about me but we got to love God all the time I would submit to you today some people don't know how to love him. they don't even love themselves because if you love yourself then you can love God some people don't love themselves some people hate themselves what you mean? They look in the mirror and say, "Why I got to look like this? Why I got to have a body like this? Why Why I wasn't born this color? Why this? Question God. Why this and why that? You don't love yourself. How can you love somebody else when you don't love yourself? When you look in the mirror, you ought to see God. I don't care if you're wide in this room, you still ought to see God. You gotta first love you before you can love somebody else. You got to appreciate, that's why a lot of ladies get caught up in the trick that they get caught because they don't love themselves. They let somebody else act like they love them and then they get caught up in that love which is not a real love. Oh, I wish I had somebody today. I'm talking about the real love, the love of God. We're supposed to love him, love him. But y'all love him so much, man, it hurts. Sometimes y'all cry. I'm a very emotional person. Y'all may not believe it, but I'm a very emotional person. I can watch Imitation of Life and I just cry like a baby. I can watch stories that, that are moving stories and I can just cry like a baby because it touches my heart. If you can't cry when something touches your heart, something wrong with you. I don't care if you're a man or if you're a woman. If, you don't, if something don't make you cry sometimes, something wrong with you. Then he says, give me back to the other one where it says you got to love him with all your heart I don't mean no valentine candy ladies don't y'all get tired of men running up in there valentine bring y'all candies and roses <laughs> talking about they love you and they just cuss you out the other moment talk to you like you was a dog and then want to come in there on Valentine's Day and bring you some candy, some old stale candy and some wrinkled up roses. I'm talking about, baby, you know I love you. And got a card, putting a card in the hand and a couple of dollars in that, that boy to make everything all right. Hello, somebody. But I love you with all my heart. I, the words on the card sound so beautiful. I love you with all my heart. And you read the card like, oh, he loved me. Then after after he done gave you the card, after he done throwed it at you anyway, and uh, laid the can up there in it, huh? Matter of fact, he opened the box and started eating chocolate before you opened the box. <laughs> and then he talking about, I love you. I 
I mean, I love you with all my what? Heart. We got to love God with all our heart. We can't play that love, play love with God. We got to get real with God. He know our heart. We can't play with him. He already know our heart. The Bible says he know our heart, and then he know our heart what? Intent. So he knows our what? Heart. He already know. Then it says, and with all thy what? Soul. This is all we got that what God gave us. And man, he breathed in the man's nostril, and man became a living what? Soul. We got to remember that soul, that soul. He gave us that soul. You know, sometimes you just, you know, you just, you know, you don't be sick. So, so, huh, sometimes you ain't sick. You ain't sick. You know you ain't sick. You don't need to go to the doctor, but that, there's something just, just make you feel sick. You're troubled about this. You're troubled. That's your soul that's troubled. Your soul, your spirit, man, got to be at rest. That spirit man be warfaring. You know, those nights when you can't sleep. You tossing and turning in the, at sleep, at night at sleep. That's that spirit man at warfare. That's your soul wrestling with the enemy. Trying to bring you back to that place of rest. Of comfort and consolation to know that God is, He still love you. Nobody else love you. Nobody else love you. Nobody else love you. You got to always understand. You may not love me. You may want to mistreat me. You may want to do this to me. But I know I got somebody that love me. It may not be a family member. It may not be somebody I even know. But God will send somebody to you to show you and let you know that you are loved by God. And sister, every man that look at you don't want you. They call, they say some encouraging the word. They don't mean they want to go to bed. That's what I said, go to bed. It's real. I don't mean they want to go to bed. Every woman that smiles at you, man, don't mean they want you to take them to bed. You can love somebody without having to have that eros love. I'm just concerned about you. I just care enough about you. I want to make sure that you get it right with God that one day you will spend eternity with him. Give my next scripture. And then he says here in John 14, 15, he said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandment. If you love me, you'll show me that you love me. You won't tell me, you'll show me that you love me by keeping my commandment. Well, what is that commandment? Love me with all your mind, body, soul. See, y'all ain't got it. Uh-huh. I told you they stick with you. Go back, bird. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. Go back, bird. They didn't get it. Go back to the church. Read it again. First with what? Secondly, thirdly, heart, soul, and what? Mind. That's the commandment. So if you love me, you'll keep my commandment. You love me first with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and then all your mind. All right, move on, Bert. Let's go on to the next topic. My final topic is how the love one another. How are we to love one another? How are we to love one another? I can't stand Kim. She's too darn bossy. Every time I turn around, she's trying to boss me. She's trying to be the boss of me. Can't stand it. And that Roddy, that minister Roddy, every time I turn around, she's smiling and laughing and giggling. She's too happy for me. Can't stand it. That last middle brook, you can't tell him nothing. Can't stand it. Hard headed as a brick. Can't stand it. And that young lady who I went to school with, I didn't like her in school, and I don't like her now. I have people that say that, you know, we try to do, well, not try to, we do class uh, reunions, and all of us do class reunions. And some people don't participate because they still want to see people how they used to see them when they were in school. Like you don't think people change? <laughs> Maybe you don't think people change. Oh, you didn't change. 
Because if you had changed, then you would learn to love people regardless as to what they say or did at school. You got to learn to what? Love. But give them a scripture bird and maybe they'll get this one. This is the new commandment he said, I give unto you. He said that ye love one another as I have what? That ye also love one another. How can you love Jesus? Say you love Jesus, you can't love people. And he's telling us we got to do that. He's telling us we got to do that. He it, it's not something that we can't do. It's not an option. He didn't make that an option, one. He didn't make that an option. He didn't make that an option. Sometimes you have an option, right? But this is not an option. He didn't give you an option. He, this is a command. He said, this is my commandment. This is what you got to do. You got to do this if you want to see me. If you want to get eternal life, you got to do this. Every one of us here went to school. Every one of us here went to school, those who are school late. We went. And there were certain things that we had to do if we were going to get that diploma. Or if we were going to move to the next grade. There was certain stuff we had. It wasn't no option. There was no option. You, if you don't do this, you can't do this. You don't do this. You, you know, you, we're going to move your own anyway. It wasn't no option like that. You had to be able to do certain things to be able to move on to the next grade or to, or to graduate. You had to have so many credit hours. If you graduated from college, you had to have so many hours of credit to be able to graduate from college and, and different subjects. You couldn't do it unless you had done what they told you the requirement is. That's a requirement. It's not, it's not something you can compromise. It's not something you can do it the way you want to do it. That's what's wrong with the world now. We want to do it the way we want to do it as opposed to doing it God's way. If we do it God's way, the world will be in a better place. Hello! Amen. But Bishop, sound like you fussing now. No, I'm not fussing. I'm backing. <laughs> There's a difference between fussing and backing. I'm backing. The word says it's a requirement. Now, twin, let me tell you something, twin. I got to tell you something about me. Twin, you know, I like to talk about me. I'm not a perfect person. And when I was 16 years old, I wanted to get my driver's license. Twin, you got your driver's license? You don't have them. Don't worry about it. They, they still give them out there. You can take the test. So when I was 16 years old, I wanted, I wanted to get my driver's license. So I'm going out there taking the driver's test. I took the driver's test, and it was a requirement. You know, you had to pass the written part. Then you had to pass the driving part. Well, I went out there. This is a hunt. I took the, the written part, the requirement. I flunked it. I didn't meet the requirement uh, the first time. It still was a requirement, and I went back seven times, took the written test, flunked the driver's test. I said, well, I ain't got to take the written test no more. I just got to come into the driver test the next time. So when I went back the next time, is you got to take the written test, <laughs> then the driver's test, because that's a requirement. I flunked the driver's test again. So then I went back the fifth time, and uh, they said, I said, well, I'm going to not have to go through all that stuff I went through the first time, because I done did this, I done did that, I done did this. Only thing I couldn't do was parallel park. So they'll let, let me just parallel park. You know what they did? They said, you got to take the whole test all over again. It's a requirement. So when I went back the sixth time, I met all the requirements. <laughs> I met all the requirements. Because I could not get no license until I met every requirement. The point I'm making, we're not going to make it to heaven if we don't meet the requirement he requires for us to love one another. That's a requirement. Not something, it's not optional. <laughs> not something you can do because you want to do it, don't want to do it. <laughs> you got to do it. Give me a little bit. Read. John thirteen thirty five. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye love one another. If you love one another, then men will know truly if you are a follower, a believer, really believe in the word. 
one thing that I believe and I do is not a person in this church whether you knew or whether you old that I don't speak to that I don't shower some love on because that's who I am I saw my sister there the other day they were down there in the china cabinet and uh and I, and I just, I walked to the, the one was at the car. She saw me, and I walked over there. We talked. She said, my sister on the inside. I said, where else? She said, yeah, she in there. And I went on the inside. She was standing in there, and she didn't see me. And I went and stood and looked at her like this right here. She looked back up. I said, yes, it's me. <laughs> I don't do that. If I see you, I show love. I mean, I show you that I care about you, that I love you. I don't care if I ain't seen you from months to Sunday. I still love you. And that's what God wants us to be about it, is to show people love. Not all these attitudes. We got see we messed up because we got attitude. But if we were to let go of what we got, then we can see what God can do for us and move us into that place where God wants us to be. And that's that place of peace. That's that place of happiness. But we carry this stuff ourselves around because we got so much hate in us, so much jealousy in us, so much envy in us. Be and greed because that's what we being taught. We being taught to love your child, your children. You are you are what you are because somebody has said, "Don't talk to them." That child on that child, that little baby right there, your baby, sister Hunt, just as friendly as you want to be. You know why? Because you teaching her to be that way. Because you can stop her from being that way. You can say you don't do that. You don't know them. Stop that. Don't do that. You can do that. But you're teaching her to be who she is and teaching her how to show love. you teaching her that. It's what you teach. That's what people live. That's what people do. What you teach. If you teach them to hate, they're going to hate. If you teach them to be jealous, they're going to be jealous. you teach them to be envy, they're going to be envy. And you don't have to tell them that. You can show it that. There are some white people that don't like black people because they've been told don't like them. There are some, there are some people who don't like Mexican people because they say don't like them. There are some people who don't like you because they say don't like you. Now I'm finna hit hard. Now I'm finna hit real hard. I'm finna talk to these young folk. Real hard. Y'all young folk lift up the head. I want to say something. Say something. Young folk lift up the head. I want to say something. Say something. Y'all got friends who don't like your friends. And they tell you, don't like them because I don't like them. And they don't want you to like them because they don't like them. I know y'all done experienced that. You may not say you have, but I know you done experienced it. Don't like them because you can't be my friend if you're going to be their friend. Hello, somebody. I something to hit hard. Because that's the way they do Because they don't like them. They don't want you to like them. They want to teach you to like hate them because they hate them. They want to talk things about them and make you believe things about them. And you don't even know them. And you start gathering your opinion about them based on what somebody else said. You better get to know people for yourself. Because that could be the best person that can help you in your life. Because you love anyhow. You don't want to love. You want to hate. That's on you. I'm not going to hate them. I'm not going to not, not like them because you don't like them. I'm going to do what God requires me to do. To love them anyhow. And if I had to love the hell 